especially being a you know entrepreneur, starting out your business, you have your hand in so many pots. But the sooner that you can get in into having someone help you do the, those little things, like I was taking on way more projects than I normally would. The fact that I can have four editors at one time working on four different projects and all I have to go in, make it look good. You know what I mean? So yeah. like that machine really got oiled up. My sister was freaking out for a second. And then she's like, yo, how are we doing this? I'm like, don't worry, just keep going. And then it's like beginning of this month. She's like, holy shit, bank account looks good. I was like, yes, it does. Yeah. I was like, you know, yeah. it was it was worth it. <laughs> So oh, man, so what's happening? How are you? Yeah, going good. Just uh, finishing off some jobs for the before the weekend. It's Friday morning now, and uh, yeah, got been busy this last like period. Um, you know, end of year budgets mm -hmm. and things like that for some clients, which is good. And then sort of planning to take a bit of time off in January and recover and sort out stuff for next year. So going well. I'm doing a total opposite. I have like nothing lined up for December oh, really? at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got like two projects I'm finishing up right now. Like I'm literally like last round of revisions and then um, got nothing planned. I'm going to Guatemala for two weeks, like first week nice. of January. And yeah. um, hopefully you come back with the bank. So definitely I'm I'm burnt out after this year, man. This has been yeah. a, a long year for me. So fair enough. What's in um, Guatemala? Is that holiday or? Yeah. So I'm doing a little bit of both. So I've been I've been shooting travel vlogs with my friends for like about a year or two, two years now. And um, I've been wanting to go to Guatemala for a very long time. Like I like surfing and like hiking. So Guatemala has a good mix and it's pretty affordable. So I've been uh, hitting up a couple of places offering to like barter, like, hey, I could like, you know, include your place in my vlog. I can even give you some drone footage. So like I got discounts in like two places right now. Um, and then I'm trying to get one to give us like a free stay, but I'm waiting here back from somebody. But it's a mixture of both. You know, I, I like having fun. Like this is what I would do if I wasn't doing what I'm doing now. So I got into video. So yeah. if I get to shoot a vlog and put somebody's you know hotel in it and i get a discounted room where they like upgrade me like i'm down so yeah that's a great idea yeah man Very um cool. yeah dude so what's happening in your business like what can i help you with and then i'll get into like the questions i have oh, okay yeah um i was thinking before yeah main questions i had i guess were probably around probably around the future pro group because i was okay. interested in that and then seeing you in a, bit, a fair bit and um there's a few things i want to do with that i guess like a bit a little bit of context is being in the business <clears throat> start this business at the beginning of the year before that, I was doing like more just freelancing stuff a little bit. No background in video or anything like that. Cool. Background in business, accounting. My wife who works in the business with me, she's like the main editor. She did like video and starting the business always a bit all over the shop with like who we're working for, what we're doing. And then over the year, like we've really found a good niche both in health a little bit, like public health system in our local area. And we work with a few people in that, a few programs and that just helping them with videos and a lot of just editing work for them, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is like schools. So like, I don't know what the school system is like in the US, probably similar, but there's like public and private schools. Yep. Um, so private schools we've found to be really cool. We had one in already with like a good private school and we've just been doing like event videos for them and uh, end of year videos, dance videos, all sorts of things. So nice. we, we've picked up a new client recently, another private school that they referred us to. So that's sort of our little world. Nice, a lot of referral business. Yeah, mainly referral. But building our content and marketing, I'm not sure if you've seen our website or brand or anything like that, but sort of this year sort of been like, I, I put my goals as three things that were sort of like, because we're starting up and you sort of all over the shop a bit, it was sort of like visibility. So just getting our name out there, mm -hmm. um, like consistent branding. So just getting our branding sorted so people can start to recognize us a bit better because it was sort of all over the shop for a bit. And then just the third one was like just being a good person and doing good work. Like, you know, that'll bring more work if we can just be good people to work with. We may not be the most technically like professional videographers, mm -hmm. but um, we sort of pride ourselves in just being good people to, to work with. So that's our little world. I mean, it uh, sounds like a, it's a three solid foundations to a pillar to run a business, man. Yeah, cool. Really enjoyed um, your content, watching your videos on YouTube and just getting some bits and pieces of advice. Particularly, I uh, liked like, the website reviews. They were really good. Your website's pretty good. I looked at your website. Uh, actually, you guys are doing a really good job with that. And the fact that you've seen been doing it like for a year or so, like definitely looks like you've been established for a lot longer than that. I think that's the biggest thing too. It's like perception is everything. It's like the main reason yeah. I went from like <clears throat> Rigo Tasca Productions to Tasca Studios because like the perception of a one-man band, even though it still really is that way, to a client lending on your webpage, they need to make it seem like there's a lot more people involved. So 
Hundred percent. Thinking about um, soon doing like because because we haven't only we've only had these like niches really sorted for like you know maybe the second half of the year mm. even less. So maybe being like a bit more maybe doing separate landing pages for each of the niches. So definitely schools like we actually I would, I'd love to show you not finished just yet but we're making a PDF like a mm-hmm. what do you call them like a lead magnet on like video for schools private schools at the moment which yep. looks like fully branded it's got like six blogs built into it with like six different like things for private schools like the best videos why to have video all this sort of stuff nice um, so that, that that will easily translate to like a landing page as well which will be cool mm-hmm. and then probably do one similar for health and then any other ones that I end up doing I highly recommend that so like in my website I have I have my my regular corporate video production landing page, but like last year we started building, we built one out just for dentists. So like, because it makes it a lot easier to write for you to like just send them to that one page. Also makes it easier for you to talk to them because it's like versus customers and talking about patients versus an office, you could say practice. So those are all yeah. words are familiar to your client, right? So it's to them like, hey, you're speaking my language. Uh, so I definitely recommend um, doing that. Yeah, cool. So when you said visibility, branding, and being a good person, I mean, is there questions about visibility or branding that you had? Oh, I think I was just talking, yeah, more generically. I think like main question would definitely be around the future pro group. I, I, I guess one of the reasons I wanted, I, I do want to keep building on my content marketing mm-hmm. and doing blogs, SEO. I'm still just feel behind on SEO. I want to like just become, I guess that's part of visibility as well, just getting the business out there and a bit more. So I guess my bet, my question will be, yeah, more about visibility and then also like how the future pro group could help that. Are you in Google My Business right now? Yep. So you have Google My Business, Bing Places, and then Yelp. I don't know if Yelp is popular in Australia, but those are the three biggest um, search engines down here. Then of yep. course, like you could add it to, to like Apple Maps and stuff like that, but making sure that that they're optimized in those three main ones and that you have to make sure that you're, they go by NAP, which is in your name, address, and phone number. It needs to be written exactly the same in all three of them. It actually needs to be written exactly the same on all the different directories where it ends up getting flat. Ruan Marino is a really good resource on YouTube for just SEO stuff. I learned a lot from him over the past couple of years. I mean, there's a lot of different good stuff out there, but I was actually having a call with somebody earlier today. Like we haven't reached out or like looked for a client in like almost two years now because like all of our work has came in from SEO, just being found on the internet. Yeah. So that was you or that was the client? No, I was talking to somebody else about it. Your partner. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so somebody was asking me about how I've been like, in, like, because they're asking me about like what my sales funnel is. And I was like, honestly, yeah. like, I don't have a sales funnel at this moment. Like, I haven't looked for clients because like it's been so hard with managing projects, shooting projects. Like, I was traveling a lot for a client, so like having a sales funnel just something that never worked like not that it didn't work for us but like i just didn't have time to implement it but yeah. working on my website and seo a little bit every single month that's one of those things that it doesn't go away it only gets stronger right versus like yeah. if you're doing facebook ads or google ads it's pay to play the minute yeah. you stop paying you're not getting views but with seo like you build in the lead magnet and putting that inside your website it's going to drive so much traffic yeah i think one of the blog posts we did i think it was like dental marketing guide 2022 or 2021 it was like I, I did a little bit of keyword research you could use like uber suggest as one of the websites and you could like look up the search term that people are looking for then make sure you include that i don't know who's doing your lead magnet for you but make sure that you that it's optimized with like keywords like seo keywords yeah. so it's gonna be able to drive that traffic on there yeah cool does anyone feel like your seo stuff or you do it all yourself just from learning i've been doing it myself from learning just because like when i started this business like i was broke so i like that's yeah. the reason i learned seo and i didn't go another source of marketing because like i just didn't have the <clears> money <throat> but now i'm working with this girl Haley. she's gonna be redoing my website copy uh we're actually gonna sit down next week to kind of just iron some things out but i think it comes down with time right like i've been in my business for almost six years and now i'm hiring somebody to do you know my copywriting for me because in the past i kind of did everything but like now we're making yeah. some money i was like let me get one thing off you know my list of things to do where i can have somebody that's better than me to do it that's regarding nice. the future pro group it's one of those things that you're gonna get what you put into it so it's like if you're gonna show up for the calls it's gonna be a place that's gonna be very resourceful 
so for you, it's going to be a place where you could build, you know, friendships. Um, you know, yeah. one of my best friends is Mo and I met him through the future pro group. So, yeah. and it comes down to like, you know, how active are you inside of the pro group? But I've put videos on there that like I need a feedback on and you have like some very insightful people that can really help you. Just things that you wouldn't think about, right? To me, that's the useful part. I'm not as active on it right now just because I've been so busy, but we have yeah. calls every Wednesday. We also have office hours like where Chris brings in like industry experts like he's like he brings in his accountant you know he brings in like entertainment lawyer and you could ask those questions which normally you know, you know this person would charge you like 500 bucks an hour or something like that and you're able to yeah. fill out to office hours and be able to kind of get that resource from that person so like i said i'm not active in it i still gladly pay 150 bucks every month to be in it for like almost the past three years now yeah right so there's a lot of resources too and like the reason i joined the pro group originally was i consumed every piece of content that they had on the internet and i was like i need more because like i didn't go to school yeah. for any of this either so for yeah. me it was like youtube was my school and i was like okay mm -hmm. i graduated <laughs> youtube there's nothing now chris yeah, exactly. like, there's i need more content chris and then they're like yeah. we have the pro group i was like all right let me join so definitely yeah. helps but there there's a lot of good calls on there that they're no longer on youtube but you have to yeah. do the work like you have to go in you have to search for those calls you got to yeah. ask questions and i mean to me it's worth it yeah it's almost overwhelming the amount i think i saw a bit of the um the open day they had recently and it was almost overwhelming how much stuff they had in there because mm -hmm. <laughs> i was like oh man there's there's a lot of things that i would learn but then i've also got like part of my personality my problem is that i'll just spend too long down rabbit holes just reading and watching every bit of content mm -hmm. and i probably like realistically what I, I know what i need to be working on like maybe seo and like my content marketing stuff but i'll end up getting distracted by like all sorts of stuff and then sometimes it can make it worse like not worse but like learning too much too fast can sometimes be harder because you know what it's like like when you don't have the resources to implement mm -hmm. it and everything you just sort of get then get a bit stuck you're like damn i don't have this i don't you know my ux isn't done properly or this isn't done properly and you start to be like far out like i just i'm starting to feel behind and like out of time yeah i don't know i mean with seo stuff like most of the stuff with seo that has nothing to do with like your ux design um so it's one of those things that if you're learning <laughs> and you want to implement seo into your website it's honestly it's one of those things that you can do right away and that's one of the main reasons i chose that as like the first thing that i was uh implementing my business for marketing yeah. but uh julie kim she's part of the pro group she's like an seo ninja um so pretty sure she probably has some calls up there but i think for anyone man especially because i've i've gone through that of like learning too much but it comes down yeah. to implementation right like i i would never like i'm not i'm not the kind of person like when i was learning facebook ads like i wouldn't learn facebook ads for two weeks and then do it i'm like literally have my laptop next to me yeah. learning at, and, and like i'm trying to run facebook ads as right now yeah. as i'm trying to learn you know because like with me and like i was like a, a c plus best at best like a c yeah. plus student like i couldn't learn like that like learning something for two weeks and having a test on it like my brain does not work like that but like <laughs> by actually getting to do it you know i learned a lot more so yeah and you have accountability partners too um you know there's people all over the world and i think there's for a fairly lot amount of people from like australia you know southeast asia and stuff like that so in a fairly close time zone if you ever need you know someone holds you accountable have, having a partner in the pro group something that helps a lot like with me and mo works out we're in one hour difference he's in video editing now he doesn't do production anymore but like we still go through a lot of the same problems so it'd be like you know client calls me asking something be able to run something by him um i yeah. think that's great you know you do have your wife that works with you i think that's another huge accountability partner that you have um but you tell me your wife edits dude if i was in your time zone right now i'd have so many editors in the philippines doing all the editing for me Oh, really? that, yeah. yeah dude like that's the <laughs> biggest thing i just i had three editors i just let all of them go really um, it's just hard dude like the 12 hour time difference of like me starting my day and they're going to sleep and i was like hey i need yeah. like like them not uploading certain project files or like you know not having certain things and like hey i need to get this like right now and like i don't hear from them for like six or eight hours and so they wake up again it was just one of those things that i was like this is killing me i like i can't yeah and then and for what they charge overseas compared because like some of them were like really good like really, yeah. really good and like right. a fraction of what i was paying for editors here but yeah the the communication and the time difference i just like i so that's something i'm working on like another reason i'm not taking on projects this month is like i'm really working on the internal like you know sops and like you know how do you start the project how do you like yeah. like all those things is like what i'm working on yeah amazing what sort of um what sort of rates are you talking for like a good editor in southeast asia oh um, uh, honestly between five to eight dollars an hour. hour yeah yeah right 
right. That's pretty crazy. US dollars, yeah. obviously, but yeah, because I mean, for, before for good ones, pretty. So, would you get them to do like the first draft, and then you would work on it afterwards, or yeah? So pretty much, you, normally <laughs> it worked in three steps, right? The first thing I'll have them do, which I, the first thing, if you're gonna do this, the first thing I recommend you start doing is record yourself like editing. Like I did a lot of screen okay. shares of me like editing in a project, and like and as I'm editing, I'm explaining my thought process. I'm like, hey, this is where I like this clip. This is why I'm picking this in out in point. This is why I'm picking the out point. This is why I don't like the shot. Like, yes, looks good, but like how this is out of focus, that's not a good shot. I literally like the things that I'm thinking, I'm like saying it out loud. And then what yeah. I did I had about three or four of those videos. I then found editors that I liked. And then I was like, Hey, I want you to edit these training videos for me. So like I had like one training video was like my YouTube stuff. One was client work. The other one was like a vlog. The other one was like a TV commercial Four different videos. And then I started giving those, the people that edited those style of videos, I would give them those individual style of projects. So now they already know like, Hey, when we're editing a TV commercial, you edited my vlog or my how to, you know what I'm looking for. Show me what you could do with this TV commercial. So they'll do like the first draft they'll set up the project for me. And then I'll come in second, second round. Hey, I'll take over. I'll edit it to where I want. I'll record that, show them like, Hey, this, I like what you did here. This is what I'm looking for next time. And then eventually like the second one, they'll do the first and second draft and eventually the third draft and like to get you to like the finish line and you do whatever it is that makes like you know your your team special yep. just add your touch to it but that's how it was working out for me yeah right. so but it was a long process like there's a lot of stuff of like you know and it's like being overseas like people be like yo yeah. my internet it's not working for like two or three days i'm like i need the like dude i need <laughs> these files you know what yeah, i mean so like yeah. There's certain situations or like, you know, they're like, oh, I can't get to the cafe. So then I started learning and I was like, okay, I need to make sure that you're working from home. I need to like, you need to do an internet speed test, all these things. Yeah. Like I was learning uh, throughout yeah. the process. And I was like, okay, these are the things that, you know, for me to, when I do this again in 2022, I already have these systems in place. So when somebody does come in, like I'm not dealing with all the bullshit that I already went through. Yeah, so. that's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it's one of those things that, and it's like the like especially being the you know entrepreneur, starting out your business, you have your hand in so many pots. But the sooner that you can get in into having someone help you do the, those little things like the fact that i can have four editors at one time working on four different projects and all i have to go in do is like make it look good yeah you know what i mean like i was like profitable two months we had or like the last two months because like i was taking on way more projects than i normally would but they were editing projects when i was out shooting you know what i mean so yeah. like that machine really got oiled up my sister was freaking out for a second and she's like yo how are we doing this i'm like don't worry just just keep going yeah and um <laughs> and then sure enough like beginning of this month she's like holy shit bring account looks good i was like yes it does yeah. i was like you know yeah. it was it was worth it but yeah but as sooner that you can start getting someone to help you do those little things and like write down a list of the things like what is it that you really need to do and like for those other things like start just giving them somebody else man it's probably the best yeah. thing to help yeah because i mean the, the best thing like you said if your backgrounds in business and all that like you should be just out there talking to you know business owners so, like you shouldn't be doing any of the editing you should, eventually shouldn't do any of the shooting like i love being able to go into a shoot and just have to be the producer or the director yeah. like the team like the project all those projects always come out way better because like i'm not the one shooting directing doing all five things right yeah um 100%. so like, you end up making you know a little bit less money but then the volume and time that you get back to me that's where like it's really worth yeah. it yeah no, it's smart yes yeah, so i guess like my question is like you've been in business for a year now and i guess like i'm just curious of like you know what was really the decision of like you know buying the agreement pack versus downloading the free pdf like you, you already have a contract or what was that situation i think i did see the free pdf but i assumed that there was more in the pack been following your stuff for a while and i thought I, i'm i just collect think things as well like i didn't specifically need anything right then mm -hmm. but um i've got like a simple contract that i use um but i did think i'm probably going to start needing some more bits and pieces and get that a bit more professional the main two things that I think I saw in the that were going to be in the pack were actually not the main things that, that I was looking for. The main things were that I thought would be good for me would be release forms. I still need to get my head around release forms properly. I am not amazing at that for both like people in general audiences or for like, like I'm shooting a lot of kids now at schools. The schools themselves, sometimes they usually have stuff like in place. Mm -hmm. But like, I think I need to, I still don't know, like if I'm then sharing that on my own platforms and things like that, what's the rules for me there? I still need to get my head around that. And then the other one was like, 
The other one was the contractor agreement for like independent contractors. Cause again, mm-hmm. I, I've used a couple of people before they've been great, but everything's always just been like, you know, we're mates, like we'll just trust each other. And yeah. I'm just trying to get things a bit more professional. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously just to have a bit of paperwork that I can just say then, Hey man, here's the, here's the agreement for the next, the shoot next year. So they were probably the two ones that jumped out at me the most, to be honest. Gotcha. What, what do you think, like, what can I do? What do you think is missing from the website that I can make it better to possibly help drive more sales? Like with those sorts of forms? Yeah. I, I thought, I mean, there's a few things I, I feel like budgeting and money and stuff is massive. Mm-hmm. everyone wants to know how to budget for videos and i was i've been there millions of times yours i think yours that was like an added add-on that you had as part of it like mm-hmm. also if you get this there'll be like the budget thing again if you probably put more work into the budget thing and sold that individually i think people would like really like that okay i the one i actually have that i previously got the budget one was really good was um chris howes okay Do you know yep. chris howe at all yep yeah, yeah, he, Canadian, him and Liz, yeah, him and Lizzie did like a budget thing from when they used to have like an agency thing. Mm-hmm. That one was like, and he he makes a he makes a video with it. It might be worth you getting for an experiment or whatever. But he gives you like a private YouTube link as well, and they go through how to use it and fill it out and everything, mm. and then how he turns that into an estimate and turns that into an invoice. So that that was actually massive for me to feel confident enough to start like pricing my jobs properly. That if you wanted, if I was going to say anything, I'd probably go maybe work on the budgeting ones a bit more and sell them separately. Separately. Okay. Would definitely get you more sales. Because you what are you you're only really selling the agreements and things, are you? Or is there other things as well? Or then you're selling the like the one-on-ones as well. Yeah. So the so I've been sell, so there's three products right now. There's the contract pack, there's a real estate one, and there's a wedding one. And then okay. there's I'm working right now on doing like uh storyboard treatments and like um like a pitch stack to clients. And yep. then I have I have like two other or then I have like um like a production, like a production outline for like the day of the shoot, something else that I'm contemplating selling that individually or just adding that to like the corporate kit. But it's always like, you know, 500 more things to add to my list of things yeah. to do. So it's always like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I want to do this. And I get like all hyped up. And like right now I'm like editing a Bali vlog that I shot two years ago. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, you know, it's all over the place. Yeah, 100%. Um, But the video, that's something else I thought about doing was the, um, like even doing a video, just talking about, what's inside of the the contracts itself because like, i have one that talks about like why you should use contracts or think having one that actually explains everything that's in there i think that would be useful Definitely. as well so yeah okay cool yeah i reckon a way of um yeah if yes packaging th- a couple of things up always makes it look better doesn't it? like even with the yeah. contracting one you could have you could have had a private link in that it was like and also you get like a one hour course with me talking through how to use the contracts and breaking mm. them down like you did the PDF, which sort of says like, you know, your little one minute, your little couple yeah. paragraph summary. But if you were just there going like, like from my experience as this, you know, coming into the business new and fresh, like if someone, whenever someone just sits down in front of a computer and says like, this is the one you need, like, just do this. Like, don't forget about, you know. And so like, if someone said to me, release forms, like, here's what you need to know about release forms. Don't worry about them if X, Y, and Z, only worry about them if X, Y, and Z. And you go, oh, thanks. Someone's just said it clearly to me. And like, now I can just run with that for a little bit. Yeah, I reckon that's that's and that's sort of what I think that's what the, like the future guys do with their products as well. Like, um, I bought with the Black Friday sale, I bought their content marketing one. I'm not sure if you got that mm-hmm. the blog the blog one. Yeah. That was really good. Um, they didn't have video in it, but just the um, just the guide was so clear and yeah, really I, well thought out. I've bought their project management. one. Well, I bought a lot of courses from them, but I've yeah. got the project management one, and it's like it's literally like eight videos of like um yeah. Ben and uh, Matthew like. Like walking you through like you know yeah, right. everything um but it's definitely something that you know i guess i want to do it just finding the time to do it in between projects and trying to do yeah, 500 100%. million things so but it's good do to you know. find it to be like profitable like is it is it something that's do you think you want to build up over time or like you're already making relatively good money from it yeah i mean definitely want to build it up over time i think right now honestly i think like this year i might have done i mean from the coaching calls i probably made like close to like two thousand dollars this year doing that yeah nice. it's not bad and then yeah. from my online store because that's the thing too i was curious because like it's one of the situations for me with the doing the free pdf i've gotten a lot of free like a lot of downloads yeah. but then as soon as i put that up my online sales just like just went down so like right now this year of like passive income i've made six 1600 bucks from the contracts yeah, and stuff nice. like that that's cool it's not bad you know what i mean but yeah. it's like it trickles in it's like you know 10 bucks there 23 dollars here back and forth so eventually and like my whole idea with the free contract is was really to 
be able to collect email addresses. So I could then like, when I start launching more products, I could either like yeah. reach out to those people, but then also use that data to run Facebook ads and create local like audiences on those yeah. people to then yeah, sell the okay. contracts. But currently working with somebody that's going to make me like a, an ad for me to start running. But you know, it's the entrepreneur thing. Like you said, I'm doing like, you know, I got so <laughs> many hands and so many different parts. I know, that... it's hard. Eh? There's definitely room there though, like in the education space still for like, you know, the future thing's awesome, but it's still sort of generic to um, a lot of different creative people. There's some videos, people that are specific, but like there's still room for a lot more. Like for example, you're talking about real estate and um, weddings. Like mm. I, I, I love the idea of them. I'm, I was never interested in doing either of those two things because I find that they're saturated and there's sort of a very specific way of doing them. Whereas I come from a business background and I just know that there's all these different niches. There's all these different people that could use video. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't have that knowledge and they don't have the creativity, I guess, to think like, okay, how can I use these video services in a much better way with people that have the budgets for them? Like wedding, you know, you know weddings, you can get a bit of money for them, but you, you're paying, you're making two kids pay for them and their parents sort of thing. Or like, yeah. like real estate, they're used to it, but then like they just, it's just fighting for the lowest price sort of thing. Thing. Yep. You can go to these business institutions, health institutions, education. They've got marketing budgets up to like hundreds of thousands of dollars every year, sort of thing. Um, and if people were getting educated on that, like if you were running like you know private group as well, where you sort of said, "I'm going to interview people in all different areas of video niches and things mm -hmm. like that, and find how they run their business." That sort of knowledge, I think, would be invaluable. So mm -hmm. there's heaps of room, I think, still for education. Yeah, in that I mean. World. And the way I look at it too, it's like, what's Chris doing, right? There's a reason why Chris stopped doing client work. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Just like success leaves clue. He's like literally laying out the blueprint, but it's like one of those things that's so hard to uh, just make that leap. And then I already hear him. It's like, you're just not charging enough to make that leap. I'm like, you're right, yeah. Chris. He's like, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's so, so true. I've been wanting to do this whole interview thing with different people, and it's just, dude, I have like such a back. I have like a literally a huge backlog of like content and interviews and stuff. So it's like every time when I think about recording something new, I'm like, how about you finish all these other yeah. things you have? Yeah, it's hard. You just get excited by the new idea on the same mm -hmm. like oh i want to do this now one thing i saw that you do uh, that i was also interested in really quickly was um the creative meetup i think you went to some sort of yep. meetup in your local area mm -hmm. that's something i've been thinking about doing in my own region <laughs> Uh, any advice on how that works? I assume you don't run it, but you're a part of it. Sort of yeah. Thing. So my two, my two friends run it. Um, it's a great idea. There's a, I know a lot of different people that do a lot of different ways. I have this other guy in like Minnesota or something like that. He started a private Facebook group for videographers looking for work. Yeah. And then he uses that to find talent for his productions. Yeah. So versus like the situation of having like you having to go out and look for a bunch of people, like he literally had everyone come to them. Now with the media meetup, um, pretty much the guy that runs it, he owns a marketing agency and pretty much his idea was to have business owners come and be able to mingle with creatives. Um, so what they'll do is like, you know, they'll talk to different restaurants or things like that. And it'd be like, Hey, can we use your space? You know, they're like, they create like some type of like bar tap system. Like, you know, it was guaranteed to spend like a hundred bucks on here or like some places offer to give the first round free. And you're bringing people to the restaurant where normally in a Tuesday night wouldn't be busy. Yeah. So then the other thing that they do, like you're able to submit like your work and then usually what they will have, like uh, to make sure like there's some type of TV, if not, they bring a computer and it'll like showcase people's work. Like, Hey, you know, this is Rodrigo, Rodrigo's TV commercials. Here's his reel. And they'll like play the reel there. And then like they'll offer, like they'll do like, you know, hey, this week uh, we're going to offer a free website audit. So what he's really in sense is like collecting you know, information from business owners that might be interested in audit, which he already offers as one of his services. But now he already has, you know, somebody that, you know, might be in a warm lead now because they're already interested in the service. Yeah. So in your situation, you might like do something for schools and be like, hey, we're going to offer, we're going to do one free video for school this quarter, come yeah. to our media meetup thing. You know what I mean? Then you get everyone to come in and kind of go through that process. Yeah, true. So it's always cool. good. It's like, uh, is it Gary, Gary, he has the saying of like um you know the popular kids in school are the ones that had the party yeah so he's like go throw that party 100 percent. yeah you know no, we mean? felt the same in our business like the whole year you sort of like you feel like you're sort of scrounging a little bit trying to connect with different groups you know like, can i get a coffee can i get this and then we just keep coming back to like 
we need to be the ones like we need to create the opportunities. We need to be the ones that are like holding events. We need like that's like we've got to attract people to us rather than like trying to force ourselves onto other people. Mm-hmm. I guess is how you look at it. And so yeah, that's definitely something I've been interested in because when you say marketing agency as well, like there's a stack of like there's so many like digital marketing agencies and creative agencies now and they're popping up, especially all over where we live in Newcastle. And a lot of them don't do video or they don't have that as a service. And like I don't I don't necessarily want to do I don't really like doing corporate work from the point of view that like, you know, a say an accountant gets us to do a video or two like they'll probably get one or two videos they don't have a huge budget um and it's a lot of like back and forth trying to get the sale for just one video but if i can work with an agency that works with accountants and they get me to come into all the videos and i give them a good price for that but they're sort of managing the sales if you know Mm -hmm. what i mean and i'm just coming into that's so there's a lot of these agencies i want to connect with and i've sort of i've been meaning to connect with them literally all year and i've made a few little contacts but i've just sort of i haven't felt comfortable in like what's the right approach to them and i don't want to exactly what i was saying before i don't want to just like reach out to them in the sense like I'm going to grab a coffee and just try and get my name in front of them. That's mm-hmm. good. But I want to just, I want to have a way of like bringing them to me in a natural way where like, Oh, Hey, I'm running this like thing for creatives for creative marketers in Newcastle. I want to put this event on. I want everyone to meet each other. Oh, by the way, we do video. If you need us to like, you know, do video for your accountants, like that'd be awesome. <laughs> no, that's sort of, and when I saw that meetup, I was like, that would, that would be something like that is what I've been thinking for a long time. I love table tennis. I want to mm-hmm. run like a table tennis tournament or something like that. You know what I mean? I mean, it's one of those things too. Like when you see like a lot of these charity events and all these things, honestly, that's all that is like, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you're getting people that are going to come in, they're going to donate, you know, 15,000 whatever to a good cause these people have money to spend if you're able to donate 10 to 15 thousand dollars to a good cause and you're getting all these people it's your network right yeah yeah. So it's it's no different than that but i think that strategy is definitely um you know host that party have them come to you yeah cool might try some of that yeah if, if if you have any um if you ever think of or you post anything on your instagram i'll keep my eye out but about like a creative meetup sort of thing or any other ideas about how that works that'd be really cool like For sure. how to reach out to your network in the area or how to like how to meet up with more creatives because everyone's got to build that list you know like mm-hmm. chris chris talks about it a lot like build your freelance list yep and i think again that's another good way to do it like build the list by bringing people to you rather than like hey man send me your rates we might have work for you sometime yeah so i mean what i've done with that in the past has been i'll put i'll post i'll blah. I'll post ads looking for video production. So I'll go to Craigslist, spend five bucks, make an ad. Say I'm looking for somebody to do video production. Or I'll go to Production Hub looking for somebody. Hey, I'm looking for somebody to shoot a three-minute brand video. Send me your, send me your examples and rates. Yeah. And then that's how I get because like I in the past, like I went around kind of doing that, but I was like, it's too much. So like I literally like had a form. You guys fill out a form with all the info there. And then that's yeah. it. So okay. versus trying to like track everyone down. It's like, that's one way to find it. And then you also find out like what people are charging, right? Cause then I find some people like, yeah. man, you're really good. You're only charging this much. And I was like, yeah. but then my other problem is like last year, like a lot of this backfired with me because people that are working with me. So watching my channel. So then they're like, I want more money now. I'm like, dude, he's like, I saw, <laughs> like, I saw your videos. I'm like, <laughs> And, and mm-hmm. like they stopped working with me and now like they're back to doing like really low end projects. I'm just like, dude, let's work with me. Like, you know what I mean? But yeah, okay. it's, def- it's definitely a two, uh, sword, two, is it? Two edge, so yeah. Yeah, two edge sword. Cause yeah, that's, okay. that's the thing people don't understand. Like if I'm charging, you know, five, thousand dollars for one video i don't necessarily take home five thousand dollars right there's a cost yeah. of like acquiring the client like the maintenance yeah. all that stuff and people are like no like no this one guy, understands that yeah. yeah the guy's like i want 200 bucks an hour i'm like for why he's like for me to show up yeah. i'm like are you yeah. putting together the whole production he's like no for me to just be on set i'm like no dude he's like you're fucking crazy it's like no it's the it's the um it's the biggest bane of any business owner in the creative world i think because all all the creatives themselves like the designers or whatever they just they can't they never understand the cost of acquiring clients and marketing and things and that's really what a business owner does and it's hard for like as i'm sure you found this as a business owner sometimes it's like people say to you like what are you working on what are you doing and they sort of expect you like oh i'm a videographer they expect me just to be holding the camera doing this i'm like ah there's a lot more that goes into it like i've got to you know maintain a whole business i've got to be thinking about where the money's coming from in the next like six months like i can't just walk around with a camera all day like oh i'm just gonna take some photos and hope that i've just got somewhere to go tomorrow sort of thing yeah but yeah it's hard to make people sort of get that they're like oh so you're getting but then you're getting this 30 percent profit margin you're getting all this you're like yeah but that's come from months and months of like chasing this person up back and, and forth back and forth and, yeah yeah 100 percent. all right dope, cool, man. man all right man we'll uh, man. be in touch appreciate the call for sure, man. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, let's be in touch whenever you guys open up the gates again. I'm down to come out of Australia. So 
Oh, sounds really good. Yeah, we're planning to go to the Europe probably in July. But you never know, we might duck over to the US. Where in Europe? Uh, England, mainly UK, yeah. Okay, Got cool. friends cool, and cool. family over there that we want to visit, but yeah. Add, uh, add Croatia to their list, man. Okay. Croatia For is like one of or... my favorite places in Europe. Like so yeah. underrated, so underrated. Okay. No, I've so, never been there, so that's good. Good to know. Yeah, dope, dope spot. All right. All right See you, man. Take care, man. See you Bye. later.